Hey everybody, it's Kelly. Welcome back to another episode of Ask a Therapist. Today we're talking about heteronormativity. If you've been around the channel for a while, you've heard me talk before at different angles of heteronormativity. But I cannot overstate the importance of the place that heteronormativity plays in queer people understanding their worth, in the laws that are passed, and in the ways that we approach other people in general. We're gonna look at some ways this shows up and then look at the results of that, which plays into our lives every day. Heteronormativity is the assumption that everyone's default setting is heterosexuality. It also assumes that everyone is cis, which we'll get to in a minute, but the understanding that the default setting for every single person is number one, sexual attraction, number two, identifying with the sex you were assigned to at birth, and number three, you want sex with someone of the opposite sex. All of that falls under the umbrella of heteronormativity. Let's talk about these assumptions a little better. Number one, heteronormativity assumes that there's only one way to have sex. How boring. This idea goes back to really medieval times when the entirety of the purpose for sex was procreation. The only reason that two people had sex was to procreate and if they did it any other way for pleasure, anyway but missionary, it was sinful, it was bad, and they were bad for it. That assumption also shows up in purity culture, it shows up in so many different areas, even today in societies all over the world. This idea that there is only one way to have sex and there's really only one purpose to having sex is the reason why so many people are so sexually oppressed, really. The understanding that, yes, you have a sex drive, but the sex drive is only for the purpose of procreation, first of all, ignores the people who don't experience sexual attraction. It erases them completely. It invalidates people who feel sexual attraction in different areas or have different attractions other than the person that they're supposed to like. It puts sex in this weird box that it doesn't belong in because sex is not about just procreation. I love this argument when we have it with people because they talk about how you can't be gay and have God approve your sex life because you can't have kids. When we all know tons of heterosexual couples that also either can't or don't have kids, but their sex is fine, I guess. This idea that any other way is unnatural became this idea that two people of the same gender identity having sex is unnatural. As that got handed down over the years, there was allowed to be all sorts of lore about why it's unnatural and why it's wrong and what happens to you if you do it. It becomes part of the fabric of society that those of us in the LGBTQIA plus community have to untangle before we can make sense of our own sexual attraction or lack thereof. The next assumption is about gender. When you're born, you're assigned a sex by a doctor. Because that's how it works. They check out what you got and tell you what you are. Just because you're assigned a sex does not mean that matches up to your gender identity. But the assumption of specifically cisnormativity, bigger picture heteronormativity, is that you match what the doctor said you are before they knew you, before you existed in society, before you understood yourself, before you even existed on your own, that doctor has decided who you are and how the entire world will respond to you. What color we're painting the room, the kind of clothing we're buying this baby that has no opinion on color or recognition of color for a significant amount of time. Gender is a social construct. The way that we understand and experience gender changes as society changes. There are current societies today that recognize more than two genders. This is not a new idea. This is an idea that dates back as long as we have records. The understanding that gender is an experience that someone has and not what their body looks like. Heteronormativity erases the ability for you to identify your gender for yourself and says this doctor was correct no matter how you feel about yourself, no matter how you understand things, that is who you are. It erases individuality, it erases people's experiences. One of the hardest things for me as a therapist is when someone comes to me and they say, I just don't agree, my child is not trans. My child is not non-binary. I can't understand 
how a parent is going to say what their child experience is. You are not in your child's head. You do not actually know every single one of their thoughts. You don't ever actually know every single one of anyone else's thoughts. How many of you know every single one of your thoughts? For someone to dictate for someone else what their experience is and how they're allowed to go about their lives and be members of society, for someone else to dictate that is just flat out wrong. We would not do that in almost any other venue, but for some reason we think we can do it with gender. Heteronormativity also assumes monogamy. It assumes one man, one woman, together forever. At some points in our society, women were not allowed to own land. They were not allowed to have their own bank accounts. They were legitimately property of the man they married. This idea of monogamy was both for health reasons and also for control. This idea came from the church with this assumption that we can continue to control women, we can dictate who men are with in general, and we can control as a whole the things that we need to control. It's often startling to me when we look back at history, the number of things that exist simply because the church wanted to continue to exist. The problem with the understanding that monogamy is natural for everyone is that science does not support that assumption. There are countless species, countless societies where very naturally humans were not monogamous throughout their lifetime. Again, these assumptions hurt people. They take what someone knows to be true about themselves and turn it so that it is unnatural, and therefore it cannot possibly be who they actually are inside, and it becomes something to be fixed. Heteronormativity allows for discrimination to happen. The assumption that everyone is born straight and cisgender and monogamous and with sexual attraction allows for it to be okay for there to be laws to discriminate against people who do not fall in line with those assumptions. And we do it under the guise of religious freedom, Often, the idea that a store owner is allowed to refuse service to anyone at any point in time is a generally protected thing. But for some reason, we have decided as a society, it is very essential to also protect store owners and company owners' rights to refuse service in order to keep people's religious freedoms secure. People's religious freedoms were never actually in jeopardy. If you don't want to serve someone, don't serve someone. When we get the law involved to protect the people who are doing the discriminating, all we are doing is exacerbating this idea that anything outside of heteronormativity is wrong and is to be governed by laws and is to be fit into this category of, okay, well, you can't discriminate in any other way except for this one if your religion says that you should discriminate in this way. Because we grew up in a time where everyone assumes that you are straight, cisgender, and monogamous, anything outside of that doesn't need to be accepted by people who don't want to. If we were able to get to a point in time in society where we could, I don't know, let kids grow up and tell us who they are, where we could allow people to evolve and change who they are without shaming them for changing, if we were able to just let people live their lives the way they need to live it because they know themselves best, we would be living in a very different society. And who knows, maybe someday we will be. That's it for today. Thank you so much for being here. I will see you all next week. And until then, take care of yourselves and each other.